Yeah, on King Sejong. Played really well. Uh, like I said, Breed Lords always do kind of scare me a little bit, but. You know, I feel like you got the most out of them because what you know, what's gonna as a Zerg player, what you should know without Phoenix or you know any anti-air support to deal with them, your Protoss opponent is forced to blink on top of them. He's forced to try to get under the Brood Lords to kill them. So you have that uh, kind of engagement advantage in the sense that you know all of those units are just gonna hop right on top of them. So you might have a chance to actually kill off a lot of units prior to them actually being able to take out all the Brood Lords, or you might end up getting the better trade eventually. Because they don't have a choice, they can't just let the Breedlords roll over, so that's kind of what happened right there. Not a lot of Colossus to help out support, not a lot of Blink Stalkers, and he lost a lot of them really quickly trying to take out that first initial set of Breedlords, so... Uh, good play by him, of course, uh, we are tied up 1-1, let's uh, make sure we get that score correctly. Rolling, and uh, he's facing off on the left side of the map, uh, he is the purple Protoss. To game number one, can he take one more to move on? It is Saravati. Bum, 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 bum. Party hats, party hats. StarCraft four years. Yeah. I'm trying to think right now. What was my first ladder game like? Like the, I, like the whole like you know the whole birthday thing. It's it's a lot about like reminiscing now at this point. You know. I'm trying to think. What the hell is my first ladder game? Oh, I know what it was. My first ladder game was a four v four game. My first uh, ladder game was a four v four game. Th things I remember, my 4v4s I played when I first started picking up StarCraft 2. Because w when I played WarCraft 3 as a player, I wasn't really that good at like ranked play and ladder, ladder play in WarCraft 3, so I ended up being that Dota player. The, the custom game guy, I loved uh, you know, Dota, the Lion Tower Wars, all that. But I always had a little bit of a thing for team games as well uh, in WarCraft 3, so when first uh, StarCraft 2 came out, I jumped right on that band bandwagon of team games. Of course, didn't really have high IPM, didn't really understand the game completely because I didn't, pl I didn't play Brood War. I'm sorry, I didn't play it. Um, and uh, eventually when I moved on to the 1v1, man, it was hard. I still remember back in the day, I still have a couple replays. I, you know, I have them saved up of my bronze games uh, from way, way, way back in the day when I first, first started playing. I was really cute. I was a really cute Terran player. I would, I would like you. You have to remember, like th this is old, like Wings of Liberty, like Bronze League, like literally no clue, very low, like subpar 20, 30 APM, like mouse clicking stuff. It, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. My, my best, my best strat, the strat I love the most, Mass Vikings. I was li literally, literally every time I played ladder, it was like watching mono battles happen. It was, it was really awesome. Just mass, just ma upgraded mass Viking flocks flying around. Just still, <laughs> they fly over, just land, snipe everything down, lift up, and get out of there. <laughs> that was my strategy. Uh, yeah, ultras come out of just like, oh no, what are my Vikings gonna do? They're getting shredded. <clears throat> All right, so. Saravati this time around he's going to be opening up with the gateway expand. Uh, he's only got of course the one single gas opener just due to the fact you're going to have more resources only mining from a single gas. Allowing you to of course uh, not get up your expansion a little bit sooner as well as also you're going to have some additional resources to hopefully get some of those gates up a little bit sooner. Now this is four gates up very quickly so we should be seeing a quick aggression coming out of him. We'll have to see how quick Moosegills reads this. He's got a spine crawler already coming up right now. Taking the double gas at the bottom over here. Uh, it's going to be very up to Moosegills to play very reactionary at this point. Zealot, uh, Mothership Core Harass coming up. Uh, Saravati going for the placement right now of the pylons. He needs a little bit of time though. He might want to put up a couple pylons. He's already actually, there we go, I was about to say. He's got the pylon over here to the right side, so that's really good for him. Gate upgrade now is finally finished up, so the warp in should begin happening. And with the Mothership Core support, uh, this is a very dangerous play style to play against. Second Spine Crawler underway. We do have already three queens down on the low ground as well, some with energy to transfuse. Uh, lings are prepared, but they are slow lings, so he has to be very careful how he micros through this. Speed is started. Ten workers underway. Yeah, I don't know about that. Moose kills. Yeah, 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 yeah. Saravati uh, goes through with this. This could be a little bit scary. Now, Saravati, with four gates that quickly, is not pressing really hard on his opponent. I will say, Mothership Core drops the time warp. But like I said, see, there, there's that whole thing about the ten seconds. There's that whole thing about the ten seconds. Those queens got out of that time warp before even the ten seconds ended. Like, 
units will walk out of the time warp anyways. So that time warp uh, is more of a buffer, the more more of the buffer timing than anything else for the bigger engagements. Because the smaller engagements like that, it doesn't really matter if it's a PVT scenario. If somebody drops a time warp on your big army, they're going to hit the storms off on top of the time warps, or they're going to jump on you before you even get out of them anyways. So I don't know that that time warp. Deep, I don't know that time warp uh, nerf was worthless. <laughs> that's, that, that's my opinion. That time that time warp uh, nerf was worthless. Doesn't really help out much. Now uh, Muskills will continue to press off some of these units. He needs to get back on creep. He doesn't want the Zelts start start hacking away at the queens. Now until he does get some more forces out to help himself out um, with uh, speed finishing up now, he should be able to take a third base, but only if this drone gets far enough to actually take it. He will need to bring the queens out. He's bringing already some speedlings to help out and try to push off. Mothership core will go down. For now, the third hatch is a little denied for a little bit longer. He's microing the drone out of the way. Very important. He takes out the Zelts over here at the front. We'll take out the pylon as well. Drone micro and back. Zelts do get swarmed, and he should be able to finally take a third hatch. Meanwhile, behind all this, Saravada got a Stargate up, getting the Forge up as well. Oracle in production right now. Going to be going for some of that harass. There are no spore crawlers. So, uh, you know, Queen's kind of tic tac and the shooting needles at the Oracle will allow it to live quite a bit longer. And, of course, we'll see how much damage he gets done. Now, due, due to the hallucinated Phoenix flying over, this forced some Spore Crawlers to come up. I'm not sure if he's actually seen the Stargate. We'll take a look at it right now of Moosecale's vision. Okay, he did see it. Never mind. He did see it. Okay, never mind. I, th I thought he was just, due to the hallucinated Phoenix, he was putting up Spore Crawlers. I'm just like, that's a little bit of an overreaction. <laughs> it's a bit of an overreaction. Of course, uh, Ling's over here at the front will prevent uh, these units from really walking out efficiently. Here comes the first Oracle, but it will be greeted by, of course, uh, a Spore Crawler over here and a Queen. Phoenix clearing out the Overlord. Oracle flies in, will work its way on the edges. Hold position, Micros. Takes uh, three, four, five? Five total workers, yep. Five kills on the Oracle right there. Good work right there by Saravati, making the most of that right there. Hugged the, hug the edge right over there, got some on the mineral patch, got some on the gas as well. Every, li every little bit counts. Every little bit counts. Now some force fields were already used up. Saravati, of course, he can't really walk out to grab his third base. I know he really wants to, but he doesn't have an opportunity in front of him. There's enough for about a few more force fields, but uh, without actual support over here, I don't know how much... I don't know, I don't know if he's going to be able to walk out really efficiently. This is a huge uh, swarm of links. It will be able to surround and actually kill all of this off, or should be able to at least. Well, here comes the attack. One force field drop, second force field drop. He's actually just trying to run through the best that he possibly can. And uh, Saravati completely surrounding himself with force fields. This will force the links for the time being to kind of push off. But uh, that's it for force fields, so... If more links start coming over here, I don't know how Saravati's ever going to get that third base up for himself. One sentry surrounded goes down. Third hatch finished up. 17 drones in production. Hive already underway. Damn! Damn, Moose Gills, you sexy. Dropping that hive down so early. But it's good, though, because uh, if Saravati does plan to take the third base, he does have to sit back at home a little bit longer. He can't be the aggressor. Uh, so whatever right now, you know, Moose Gills is planning with the hive, it's going to hopefully work out for him. Yeah, so so many. I, I'm looking at chat right now. Yeah, no, there, there's a lot of tourneys going on right now. There are a lot of tournaments, guys. Every single day from morning to sundown. That this is this is the thing we should start right now. This is the thing we should start. Check this out. When you're talking about StarCraft, hashtag a live game. No more, no more of that dead game talk. No more of that dead game talk. We're stable. We're good. We're balanced patches. We're four years of StarCraft. Game hasn't passed out. We have tournaments from the mo the morning the morning the moment I wake up, there are tournaments on. Usually it's the GSL on, GSL's on or some European tournament or European Cup is on. In the daytime, all our NA stuff, all the European big tournaments. Nighttime, GSL kicks off again. Copa America, all those type of tournaments. There's literally not a moment really without StarCraft. There's maybe just hours of gaps, like only a couple hour gaps here and there, but. When you have endless content of StarCraft, man, it's good for the viewer. It's, sometimes it's a little bit too much, a little bit of content overload. Uh, overload. We, we saw what happened, what, what uh, content overload, overload did uh, did to us last year, but that, that was just WCS. That was one tournament. Right now, all of these different cups, all of these different players, 
a lot more interesting to watch. And, and I feel like the game, the balance of the game is in a little bit of a better place as well, which makes it a little bit easier for the viewers to consume. Moose Gills, meanwhile, uh, getting the infestors out. Needs probably a couple more if he wants to chain down the phoenixes. But he's also got the Ultra's Cavern finished up. He's got the plus two Chidius plating, six Ultras in production, plus two, uh, plus two melee, and Carapace about to finish up. And man, this is going to be a bowl over army. You take a look at this. Where are the Immortals? None to be seen. Second, a Robo getting added on in a Dark Shrine. So he's got a little bit of time to maybe get some Immortals out and maybe form some Archons to help out. But if it's just going to be a uh, Colossus and that little Gateway army versus Ultras, man, I'd be very worried about him. Voider is getting added on. Now that's one thing that could actually clear out <laughs> Ultralis pretty quick as well. If you get a good chunk of Voider is out on the map, those things will zap those bad boys down pretty damn fast. Queen's coming all, all the way over, taking a long journey over to the fourth hatch. Pushing back for the time being, meanwhile in the middle of the map. Ultras do get spotted due to the fact uh, we had a lot of some zealots coming up over here. This will force the rest of the army to go home for the time being. A few more ultras walk out. 3-3 three, three underway as well. Mortal starting to get out of though. <sighs> Moose Gills needs to think about going for it now. He needs to think about getting a heavy influx of links and just going for it. I'm really worried for him because if you guys remember from game number one, he, he's almost doing the similar thing he did with the Mutas and the Corruptors. Now he's doing it with the Ground Army. He's doing it with the Infestors and the, the Ultralisks. It really doesn't matter how many fungals you have. It doesn't matter how hard you stick that ground army in place or how much of a surround you get on him. The thing is, once it gets to a heavy point or a critical mass of immortals with plus three attack, as well as some Archon support, all he has to do while he's fungled down is just focus down the, the Ultras. The Ultras will fall apart very quickly. Like, those three, I'm, I'm, ta I'm, ta like, I'm surprised that almost every Protoss doesn't do this almost in every single game, is just add a few Immortals because once they get the plus three upgrade, they attack so heavily. It's like rocket launches, man, it's grenade launches, it's bazookas, it's, 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 it's your, it's your Kamehameha, man, like, you, like, High Duke, and like, they just blow things up, so, I'm, I'm worried for Moose Gills, man, I'm, wor I'm worried for him a little bit. Fourth base underway for Saravati right now. Army in the middle of the map right now for Moose Gills. Saravati right now, at the moment, let's take a look right now, has a total of four mortals. Is he continuing production? Yes, he has two more mortals, are about to walk out. Pulis 3 is about halfway done. Storms are getting added on as well. And Storms, of course, will do their best part in terms of clearing the links and some of the ladder units. Feedbacks also are going to be very crucial here because we do see the Vipers involved within this army. Feedbacking, making sure those Colossus or those Immortals don't get sniped prior to to actually fighting them uh, in the natural engagement is going to be very crucial. So we'll watch and see how good how good of a micro Saravati has. But we already seen it. Uh, he's already done it once. He's feedback the Vipers before, put himself in a good position. So I wouldn't be too too worried about him. Five hatch number five, hatch number six underway. And at this point, these hatcheries are not really necessary for uh, minerals. They're going to be the gas bases. So. To be able to produce, you know, more units such as uh, the Ultralisks and, uh, you know, petting your transition, what you might be looking for. And uh, wh why, why I say transition is because <clears throat> even though we see him maxing out with the Ultras right now with three more in production, he's got the plus flyer upgrades underway, he's got the plus flyer carapace, he's got the double spire inside the main base, so... I feel like once he gets uh, some of those gases up and maybe banks up a little bit more, we'll see that fight happen. He'll go for that big trade. He'll try to trade as quick as he can, and after he trades, he'll go right away for uh, he'll go right away for uh, Mutas. All right, well here we go. This is so scary. So worried for Moose Gills. One Infestor comes up, Bling Stalkers come up and snipe it down, Storm does get dropped right now, he's coming up, he's chasing him right now, getting a pretty decent surround, we'll see how long the Ultras last, already two falling apart, three go down, four go down, Ultras dying left and right, 
And uh, the miracle, uh, the miracle trans uh, transfuses are not really happening right now. Some get feedback, some are just way too far behind in the battle. And uh, this is what I was talking about. You got to be very worried about this. But 22 meters right now, quick transition. While there are not many units uh, for the anti-air, there's only a couple Archons, a Void Ray, and some Phoenixes, so this might be the right time. And if he can actually continue this fight and somehow uh, actually take out the Archon or maybe take out the Void Ray, this is going to be very big for Moose Skills because as those mutas come out, there's nothing really to fight, uh, fight, uh, fight for him. He's just producing Colossus right now. He worked in a couple Stalkers. This might be a really good scenario for Moose Skills. I think he might actually have this. Here comes the Muta Flock. 1-1 one, one is just about done. He's pressing on forward. He's going to try to do what he can. Phoenix falls apart. Archon's very low on HP. He can't bunch up, though. Be very careful. Storm! 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 Oh! We got some chance of showers tonight, baby! Uh, Sarah Vadi says, I am not going out this quick. What are you talking about, she said? Fall back, man. Fall back. Now the poor, those poor queens with that creep dissipating, uh, not able to get them back home, so he's just going to fight them off and try to hold them off, uh, the Protoss army off for the time being. Now Saravati's the one that, that's up on supply. He's looking really good, pressing on forward. There's Lings, there's Mutas, but now with the Archons, with the Stalkers, uh, I'm a little bit worried. I'm a little bit worried. He's going to try to get this around on him. Blink Stalkers will uh, make sure that they go all the way back. More Stalkers come out to help out. Archons are living through right now. He's taking out the rest of the army. Moose Gale's dropping in supply. I don't think he can hold on much longer. <laughs> Six more meters in production. Ultra, ten lings. Is it going to be enough? I say no. He's trying to regroup. He's trying to regroup right now. This is so bad for Moose Gills. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about him. He stayed a little bit too long. He stayed a little bit too long in the Ultras. He should have gone for attack a little bit sooner. So he goes for this round. Some of the units do begin to fall, but the Archon, of course, is that really large problem. And while the Archon is buffer, uh, soaking up all the damage from the mutas, the Stalkers in the back are firing off. And finally, that GG is called. Saravati takes out Moose Gills with a score of 2-1. He'll be moving on to the round of 16.